We are finally beginning to calm down from that solar storm caused by some fast solar wind. And we have three new bright regions on the Earth-facing disk that are keeping us company. Those stories and more in the news this week. Space weather this week has been pretty active. We've been hit by some fast wind from this huge coronal hole that has rotated into the Earth's strike zone, and it has hit us hard. We actually got to a moderate level storm, and it's brought aurora in many places in the world. Right now, we are still in the fast solar wind from this big coronal hole, and it will likely continue over the next few days as things begin to slowly but surely calm down. Meanwhile, we've had three new bright regions on the Earth-facing disk, two of them actually actually are numbered active regions, and these are boosting the solar flux uh, for you amateur radio operators and emergency responders back into the marginal levels, so you should be enjoying some decent radio propagation right now. And these regions should stay with us over the next week or so before they begin to rotate to the backside. Now, they're not flaring very much, but we are watching them for potential solar storm launches because they actually have launched one on the sun's backside. Switching to our M-Flare threat meter, you can see the X-ray flux is still extremely low. We are still at solar minimum conditions. We're well below the B floor, and therefore the solar flux is also extremely low. Luckily, within the past few days, we've had these new regions rotate into Earth view, which has boosted the solar flux and the X-ray flux just a little bit. And this has bumped us back into marginal uh, propagation conditions for you amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Now, we should enjoy this for maybe easily the next couple days, but we are beginning to watch these regions as they start fizzling. They're also going to be rotating to the sun's backside here in about a week, so expect this boost to be short-lived. We should only have about five to seven days before you begin to notice the radio propagation beginning to go downhill once again, but enjoy it while it lasts. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see at the beginning of the month we were actually quite quiet and then BAM! On Cinco de Mayo, no less, the sun celebrates by slamming us with that fast solar wind, and some of us forecasters thought the storm actually hit a bit early, but I've been assured by Chris Mosel and Mike Cook, who are excellent follows on Twitter. If you don't follow them, they're wonderful uh, space weather forecasters, so you really should, that when you look at stereo data, the stereo data actually shows us that this storm hit right on time, and it slammed us up to a moderate level storm by the 6th, brought us some gorgeous aurora over much of the world, although the northern hemisphere, I think, got a bit better show than the southern hemisphere this time. Meanwhile, we're still in that fast wind today. We, things are beginning to calm down. We're getting back into unsettled conditions, which is good news for you amateur radio operators. The bands are probably beginning to recover now. You're probably getting some decent propagation again, and things will continue to settle down over the next week. And this recent solar storm brought us some gorgeous aurora views over many parts of the world. I don't have a chance to show nearly as many photos as I'd like, but here are just a few highlights, like this from Denmark, and in Norfolk in the UK. Aurora reached the Netherlands, and down to Germany. Now, over the pond, it was seen in New Brunswick, Canada, and in Manitoba and Saskatchewan, and in many other places in Canada that I don't have time to show. It even dropped down to the United States. We saw it in New Hampshire, and in Michigan, and even for just a blink, it came to Colorado. Did you catch it? Now, we also saw the Aurora Australis, although they didn't get nearly as good a show down south, but was seen in Tasmania, and in multiple places, in New Zealand. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A, it's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And at the beginning of the month, you can see those three bright regions that are on the sun's backside. Those have now rotated to the sun's front side, and that's what we're watching now. But if you look right here carefully, bam, did you see that? 
That was region 2709, and it fired off a solar storm on the sun's backside. And this is why we're watching it very closely while it's on the sun's front side, because it might still have a chance to launch another solar storm at Earth this time. Meanwhile, as those regions rotate off of the sun's backside, you can actually see yet another region that's rotating into stereo's view. And it's going to be about a 10-day lag. But what that means, it's good news for you amateur radio operators, because as as our solar flux begins to die and the propagation dips back down, we only may have to wait about a week or so, and it looks like another actin region will brighten things back up and boost uh, radio propagation back into marginal. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are still feeling the effects from the fast wind from that coronal hole that gave us a moderate level storm just a few days ago. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 30% chance of a minor storm. At mid latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions with about a 25% chance of active conditions over the next few days, and this should settle down slowly as as the week progresses. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to solar flares, but as you can see, we actually have two numbered active regions on the Earth-facing disk right now that we're watching very closely, one of which launched a solar storm on the sun's backside. So while it's not a flare producer, we're still keeping our eye on it. The good news is that it's caused the solar flux to bump back into the marginal propagation levels for you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, and we hope that will last easily over the next couple days before things begin to go back into poor propagation. So the space weather this week has been extremely active. We're just beginning to calm down from that big solar storm that hit us just a couple days ago from some fast solar wind, and it brought gorgeous aurora views all the way down to Colorado. So your aurora photographers, you get a break this week as things begin to calm down, which gives you time to kind of pour over all the amazing photos you've gotten. Now, you amateur radio operators are also getting a break, but in a different way. We have three bright active regions that are on the Earth-facing disk right now, and they're boosting radio propagation easily over the next couple days and possibly over this entire week before they begin to rotate to the sun's backside and things go back to dim. And then you GPS operators, well, the solar storm is dying down, so that means good news for your reception. You should be getting cleaner signals. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.